In this video, we're going to continue our Google BigQuery journey and really our SQL journey in general. I think a lot of these functions are applicable no matter what SQL system you're looking at. So I'm going to look at uh, basic date functions today. So what can we do with dates in order to pull some analytics from our data sets? So for this uh, session, I'm going to look at New York City bike and public data and New York City bike trips. And really, I'm just looking mostly at these two columns here. I'm looking at the start time and the stop time, just so I can demonstrate some of the uh, the date functionality and the date queries and functions within um, BigQuery. So let's get going. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is a date difference. So for this query, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste in my query here. I'm going to look at the start station name and I'm going to do a date difference between start time and end time in months uh, as time unit. So this is really having a look at how many months are between the stop time and the start time. Um, so how many months have elapsed between when you started and when you uh, gave the bike back. And then I'm going to just order this by time unit. This is time unit here. That's what we're calling this. It's going to order it by time unit, unit descending. So we get the kind of top 10 longest trips in months. And we can see what stations they're from. So it's going to take a little bit because it's a, quite a big query. Um, but we can see from the top 10, we can have a look at our stations uh, and see how long they've taken, right? So date difference is a very... Um, date different is a very flexible function so i'm using month in here so i have my stop time start time and i've got my month i can also do this in days and i could just run this query here and this will run again and then instead of the months it'll give the days so you can see 226 days for this trip and these are the top trips we can also go to hours seconds minutes however you want to do it um, there's a full list of all the time um, all the time units you can use uh, and I'm going to put that into the description um, from the BigQuery documentation. So this is a date difference. So very useful function to use um, there. I'm going to go on now to my next function which is extract. So if I go back to my city by tricks trips and my preview you can see that i've got this big kind of date time here a lot of information in there and i want to kind of extract some of that so i can do some um i can do some aggregations on it so the function we use for that is extract and it's sort of similar um to the last function the date difference so i'm extracting a time unit from the time. So what I'm gonna do is just for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm just gonna add it onto this. So I've got my start station, I've got my time unit, and I'm extracting, and then you do a brackets, month from start time. So you can do month from start time, day from start time. We'll, we'll go through a few of these as we go on. So I'm just gonna run this and show you what it comes up with. Again, this is gonna take a couple of seconds to run. And when it's finished, we can say, right, what month were these long, long trips? Um, so we've got month one for three of them. We've got month two for four of them. You can see they all happen really in the first uh, three months of the year. Um, so I'm going to now use this extract function for an aggregation. It's going to copy and paste a new uh, query in here. So again, select start station name. And I'm going to extract the month from start time as months. And then I'm going to count star as trips. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking a station name. I'm taking the month out and then I'm aggregating on that month uh, with a count. So for each month of the year, I'm going to see how many trips were there. And I'm going to just limit this to one station because otherwise we're just going to have stations and um, months and trips for numerous different stations. So I'm just gonna limit this to Madison Street and Montgomery Street. And to do an aggregation, we need to group by everything that isn't aggregated. So while I'm counting star, which is counting a full 
list. So this is just a counter records. I normally would count a primary key, but you can see from this data set here, I don't really have, uh, there's no kind of trip ID or anything like that. So I just need to do a, um, a count star. So I'm gonna run this. And this will take a couple of seconds again to run. And then I can get right, what's my most popular month? Then I can see very clearly it is August from uh, Madison Street and Montgomery Street. So that is uh, 7,822 trips. So this is kind of an easy way to aggregate. You've got a big unruly date here, lots of stuff in at a date time. You wanna take out a year or you wanna take out a month or you wanna take out a day and then do an aggregation. This is how to do it. And then you would do a group by as well. So we're gonna have a look at a bigger, um, a, a bigger example of this. And I'm just gonna point out on the group, something on the group by as well. I think we've done this in a previous session, but just in case you haven't um, tuned into any of our previous sessions, um, I'll just explain why I'm grouping by the function rather than the alias. So this one I'm going to do the same, Madison and Montgomery Street, but this time I'm taking the year and the month out. So I've got my start station name, which is always going to be Montgomery, uh, Madison and Montgomery Street. I'm extracting the year and I'm extracting the month and I'm counting those. So for we could either concatenate both of those and just have like a year, month, but I'm use, using two fields here just for analytics that I could, if I wanted to take this out into a Google um, data studio that I could actually do some counts on both of these. Um, so what I'm doing here and what I wanted to explain here is the um, the group buys. So we can't group by the alias because this doesn't know that the alias exists yet. So we need to group by the function of the alias essentially, right? So extract year from start date as year. We'd love to be able to group by year, but we can't, we have to group by the actual function here, the extract function itself. So for this, you can see that I've got now a wider data set, I've got the station name, I've got the year, month, and the number of trips coming off that. So the next function I'm going to run is just a year function from the whole data set. So instead of looking at one station, I'm gonna have a look at my data set and see how many trips per year overall. And we can see we've got a big fat null here. So why is that? Um, that is a bit of an issue. So we'll look into that on our next query. But from here you can see, right, if you want to just base analytics from this data set, you go through the years and you can see every trip that started in a year. And you can see that um, 2000, 2016, 2017, where the trips kept getting bigger. Maybe the data was a little bit cut off here, or maybe we only had it for a few months, so that would take another uh, another um, bit of investigation, but you can kind of see from uh, 2013 all the way up, the trips have been getting more and more. So a little bit concerned about these nulls and what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is just a query um, to see exploratory data analysis just to see like what's going on. So I'm selecting star, which is selecting every um, column uh, from the data set where um, the year from start time is null, just to see if there's any pattern or anything like that. And when I run this, I can see that there's just a lot of nulls in the database. So it looks like most, it looks like for these hundred anyway, and if I was actually doing this as a as a paid project, I'd go in and have a look at, I'd try and take a wider look at the data set, but just the first hundred records, I'm seeing all nulls. So for future uh, queries, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm just gonna leave them out if I'm doing ag any aggregates. So another useful um, extract uh, function is day of the week. So what I can do now is I can do a extract day of the week from start time as weekday. So essentially it's gonna give me the day of the week and that's on a, um, that's on a scale from one to seven. Um, and then I'm gonna count the trips that happen on each day of the week, just to see which day of the week is most popular. I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing a where day of the week from start time is not null. So just gonna get rid of these nulls just until we know what's causing them. 
Um, so run that query. This again is going to take a little bit of time because we're looking at the whole data set. But I can see uh, that my most popular day of the week is four, which I believe it's, this starts on Sunday, so that would be Wednesday. Okay, another fun another useful function, especially from a I'm an accountant, um, and I would have well now I work in kind of finance technology, but I started my career off in accountancy, and a, a really useful function for accountants is this last day thing, right? Which would move everything, um, to the last day of the month. So for this, I am just moving, um, the day to the last day of the month. So what it does is if i have got just showing my start time and what the last day function does here. So it would move, this was the 16th of the 9th, it would just move it to the last day of the month. So it essentially lets us aggregate on that date. And that's what we're gonna do in the, the next function, which it's kind of like a last day in action. I'm gonna copy and paste this. So this is kind of what you would do. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the last day, uh, this, the last day of start time is last day of the month going to sum the trip duration um, as total duration and um, group by last day start time. So essentially what this will do, this what this will do, it'll give us a total trip duration per month. Um, obviously, we would format that to make it look a bit nicer if we were doing it in practice. But these are, uh, these are 10 months here and it gives us the full trip duration for those months. So last day is quite an easy way to aggregate everything you're say you're taking them you're taking something that happens within a month you're moving it to the last day of the month and then you can use that to sum uh, everything in that month so what i'm doing really is i'm aggregating everything on the last day of the month so i'm getting a total duration here for each month and that's quite useful um it's quite useful if you want to count everything on the last day of the month so how many sales did you make this month that sort of stuff um last thing I'm going to I'm going to show you and this is really a function that you can kind of take away and look into yourself I have a um, I have the documentation down below and this will give you a look at more formats but essentially this is how to format dates so you can see from my city bike trip here like I wouldn't want to take this into an analytics program because it's, it's it's a bit messy you'd either format it within the analytics program or you would change it now into a different format for that analytics program. And I'm by analytics program, I'm talking about dashboards and stuff like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going, I'm going to select the start time. That's the normal start time. And I'm going to just show you what that looks like formatted. So this is one of the formats you can use. So there's loads and loads and loads of these formats. Um, I'll just show you quickly what I'm talking about in terms of what formats are available. So this is the documentation here, and this will show you, and uh, I'm gonna put this down below, but this will show you um, what format you're looking for. So you can see all the way down here in the formats, and also you can format it yourself. There's ways in this documentation to format it exactly how you'd want it yourself. But this kind of gives you a good example of formats coming out and what you're looking for. Um, kind of like this, right? So that's a nice little day format there. Um, so what we're going to do is just going to use this X format um, and show you what comes out here. So this is the date that I have and this is the format of date. So just if you wanted to, if you wanted to shift your dates into a nicer format, this, um, this X and then the one that we were just looking at there, the F format is just another format we can use just to show you how these be a little bit different. So the F format when I run that that's the format there. So really this is just, a, there's loads of things you can do with dates, there's partitions, there's lag, there's lots of advanced functions in BigQuery. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to go through some basic stuff. Went through date difference, which is a really good function. Uh, went through extract, and then we had a look at the last day function, and we had a look at day formatting. Loads of other things you can do, especially uh, around, um, T taking dates in in a certain format and converting them to dates that sort of stuff how to parse dates but from the databases i have access to on this um public data sets there's nothing really that has messy dates that we would have to format them so maybe i'm gonna i do that as part of an advanced dates video later on but i think these four functions are good to get started with 
uh, on your journey in BigQuery and to start working along with dates. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is part of a series that we're going to continue on BigQuery. Um, and I'll see you very soon for another BigQuery tutorial.